Hello guys, welcome to the channel. So today I have an amazing guest on this channel and I cannot wait to get into his story, right? The man who is changing the real estate game in Ghana. So without further ado guys, let me introduce you to Mr. Denny here. Yeah, so today we're gonna get to, you know, talk to Mr. Denny here, who is really doing amazing things on the ground for people in the diaspora. But I want to get into how he started because what he's doing here is truly amazing. Denny, welcome to the channel. Thank you, Rush. Finally, we have to do this interview. I'm so excited. You but too. what I'll say to your subscribers is that they should get their popcorn and enjoy this interview. <laughs> it's not like any of the interviews that you've had. You heard that, right? Yeah. Okay, so stay tuned. Let's get into it. Right. Denny, I've always wanted to know how we started because, you know, I've dealt with you on multiple occasions. As you guys know, I went to Grace City some time back, if you haven't seen that, check it out. You got some amazing project over there. Yeah. How did this all start? Okay, I said they should get their popcorns because <laughs> most of the times, the focus is on diasporans that are coming here to do business here. There is one untold story, which is the indigenous Ghanaian one who has got no political uh, link, who has got no, who is coming from no wealthy uh, uh, family, who is not doing anything fraudulent and has been able to what? Make a mark and build a Ghanaian own brand and has employed Ghanaians. That is the story we are going to discuss today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm glad, I'm actually quite happy to be here, right? As you know, most of the people, I, I don't interview a lot. I yeah. interview a few people, especially in the real estate space. Right. And it's usually people in the diaspora. But you somehow, way somehow, you are in Ghana, but you pl implanted yourself <laughs> in the diaspora. So here we are, you know. And you know, when I, when, I, when I see you, I'm very happy because it makes me believe that what I've always thought that is actually possible to make it here with what you said, without a connection, without any money, and make it. And you are definitely a testament of that. So whenever I see you, I'm very, 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 very happy. Thank you. Thank so yeah. You. You know, I'm sure we have some Ghanaians watching or other people yeah. who want to come back home. Maybe they don't have their money already, yeah. but they yeah. want to know because you made it all down here. Yeah. Everything was built down here. Did you have yeah. any investment from outside coming in to yeah. help you out? I, I think every successful person has built very good relationship with people. People have money and money is what? It's in people. So for me, as a human being, my basic principle is to treat people well. When I conceived the idea of getting into real estate, I've done a few other businesses even before that. I've always known that if you can build your integrity, build a solid credibility, you are a people's person, you are ready to sacrifice for the long-term gain, then you are in for what? A good ride. When I started real estate, I started with no money. Okay. I just got an opportunity and then I traded a car with a chief. He gave me a piece of land and then I what? I started advertising. But what did I do? I share my, my profit with people. Anybody that comes to buy the property, I convert them into agents. Okay. I was paying as much as 25% commission. To the agents? To the agents. They were excited. They were enjoying. <laughs> but I was building a brand. I was building the future which they didn't see. So that is just one. That is just one. Yes. I love it, I love it, I love it. So with this property that you traded your car in for to start your, not the broker side, but actually being the person with the land and using other people to sell, what, what, where, where was the location of this land? This land is actually far away in the outskirts. It's about maybe two and a half to three hours to the airport. And guess what? I used to sell this land. I used to drive myself. I used to go to people's house on Saturdays, iron their clothes take them to what? To, to site. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Wow. Fundamentally, I think there are two challenges with businesses in Ghana okay. in terms of customer service. Right. The first one is, first of all, people recruit and they don't train. Okay. Business owners just recruit people, they don't train. Number two, remuneration or labor is just too cheap. Right? So we as a company, my principle and my company's principle is what? Recruit, train, and give them good remuneration. And then you can get the best out of them. Absolutely. Of course, if we do all this and you're not good, you're fired. Yes, you've done what you can. Exactly. Can. Back to the topic on the mountain. Mm -hmm. So we have been selling a lot of properties, land, development, all across the country. Why did we go to the mountain? 
in 2019, we conducted a market survey, Royal Kingdom Estate. And we realized that the country, especially in the, the capital city, mm. is congested, is choked. And a lot of people want to live in a much more greener environment. So we went to a lot of places, scouted a lot of land. We didn't like it. But when we got to a Brie and eat environs, we felt the serene view, you know, the fresh air. We felt the beautiful ambience. So we started coming up with concept, great concept. Because, like I always say, I even said it a few days ago, that look, for Africa or for Ghana to develop, one, we need a transformational leader. Two, Absolutely. we need what? Patriotic citizens. What can I do as a citizen? I have to what? As a real estate brand, add to the infrastructure of the country. So that's the agenda. That is what we're doing. Absolutely, absolutely. And if you are into real estate, then you are literally building a country. You are building maybe a small percentage. It depends on how big you can go, whether that's 1%, 0.005%. But if you are selling land, developing it, you are actually making a dent on the universe in this, exactly. this, this particular side. Exactly. So. That actually informs our model. Our model is that, yes, we know that the government is supposed to provide infrastructure. But the government cannot do all by themselves. Thank you. So what Africa in general is noted for community feel. You know, when we're growing up in Africa, you can go to your neighbor's house, they'll take care of you. Absolutely. You can eat vice versa. So we thought that why don't we come together and create a community feel kind of project? Get a land, have a development plan, sell it at a much cheaper rate, put the people in a property owners association and have them pay for the infrastructure. So that is one of the models that we are using and it's working so well. People are able to have access to the major commodity in real estate, which is like the biggest issue in Ghana. Like yeah, I've heard your story. That's what, yeah, you yeah, have yeah. PhD in uh, yeah, land yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I got the PhD from. So that's what we get to. Yes. There are a lot of people working really hard out yes. there that want to come down here and do something. But one thing that we both know is yeah land if you don't know what you're doing you 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 are going to get got in ghana right and i know you've helped a lot of people out just yeah. with my little experience you know and yeah. watching you guys on youtube and all the yeah. interviews that you've done yeah why did you i mean at what point did you notice because you were selling to local Ghanaians at one point yeah. when you first started at yeah. what point did you make the shift because I saw that in the States coming down because yeah. I know the scary stories from yeah. first-hand experience. You being down here, when did you notice like, okay, I can actually target these guys because that's like your, your, your market. So to, to start with, litigation with land is not only targeted at diaspora. That is one big misconception. Absolutely. I have been before as a local. A lot of market women in Ghana have been swindled before. Of course. That is established. Well, I didn't set out or we didn't set out as a brand to appeal to the diaspora. It is just, first of all, I believe in the destiny, alignment of destiny. We have invested so much resources and time to what? Structure our business or anchor our business on the principles of integrity, uh, customer satisfaction. And these are things that the diaspora is looking for. Absolutely. So once we got connected to one source, the other source led to the other source, and we're very, very transparent, we're very open and we are very effective. I receive calls midnight. I receive calls 1 a.m. I'm talking to clients. So they're like, is this Ghana? Is this the same Ghana that we left? Our vision as a new Africa, yourself and myself. I'm happy that this is happening in our lifetime. You are young, you are not old. I can't see any gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> and we are changing the narrative. Amen, amen. Everybody is saying, oh, Royal Kingdom Estates. Danny, you guys are doing an amazing job. I see it as a privilege. You know why? Fine. If everybody else is doing the wrong thing, then there's an opportunity for you to just do the right thing and become a superstar. Thank you. It's when people say, thank you for saying that. When people say Ghana is hard or Africa is hard, we have all these challenges that people are saying, no, you know, good customer service. People are not paying people well. So you mentioned that you just have to pay people well yeah. and then train them. Yeah. That's an opportunity in itself. Yeah. You have to do way more yeah. outside where these things already exist. Just by telling the truth, being transparent, something that we're all supposed to do, yeah. but a lot of people don't do it, unfortunately. Right. Right. So you doing that and yeah. being a good person that you are, yeah. and I can feel it. Thank you. Has, is what has elevated you, your business to where it is now. Yeah. Well, in the midst of challenges, emerges great people. Let's take Ghana, for example. We were oppressed 
by the British or by the Westerners. There um, came onto the scene a man who went to school in Ghana, just went to the West, seven years, Kwame Nkrumah, mm. came back and became what? A hero. Right. He liberated his people. So what am I trying to say? If there are challenges, right, in Africa now, right. this is the time the table is full for us to dine and leave space. The grass is green. The whole world has developed. It's our time to develop, to, Africa. To develop Africa. And real estate is, I mean, you can't do anything without real estate. Absolutely. Everybody needs the place to lay their head, whether low budget, middle or upper up market. We all need a certain kind of place to live in. So for me, I see it as a privilege that we will play a small role in this industry. And this industry is going to evolve for the next 50 years. So we want our name, yourself and myself, we want our name to be egg in the history book. Of course. Right? Of course. So it's a privilege. The customers abroad, we are doing them, they are doing us favor by investing in us. My staff, each and every staff here is aware that the customers are the ones paying their salary. It's not me. Of course. The most important person is the customer. Absolutely. And that is our principle. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I like that, Thank you know, you. Uh, because as it is down here, right, we have to, you need people like, if the competition, you are doing the right thing, then Obviously, all the people have to adjust. I've seen your Acadian city, though. He said, I've seen your beautiful Acadian city. Oh, thank you. I'm looking up to you. This, <laughs> this is my mentor. He doesn't even know, he doesn't even know it. <laughs> so, as many people are not delivering, yeah. and you are delivering, yeah. over time, people say, oh, Ghana is going to be like this forever. But it's not. Because no. if a couple of people are doing the right thing, the people yeah. are not, are not going to get any business. They yeah. have no choice but to do the right thing. Exactly. And that's the only way that we are going to change the narrative yeah. and how we our mindsets are and how we we go about business for yeah. us to progress because we cannot progress exactly. with the way we are now exactly so what have you have you seen anybody that comes like you know working with artisans or something like that yeah. and you have been able to change their mindset or the yeah. way they were or you usually fire them or they, they come around because they didn't show up on time yeah. and you fire them or you want them and they they, they they notice that okay i have to behave a certain way if i want to work with any for me, discipline, consistency, passion. If you don't have these three, this place is not for you. Because we are dealing with a market that, that has the number one rule, or their number one rule is prejudice. The prejudice that it is not possible here. It is not possible to invest in real estate in Africa, want to get quality service, or want to have uh, a genuine property. So we have, in constantly instilled in our team, the spirit of discipline, uh, customer satisfaction, making sure that they know and understand the market. I, I fire quite a lot. Mm. I fire like a, I'm like a lion, especially <laughs> when I, things don't go well and the clients abroad are calling us. Mm. So we have been able to change the narrative. The team that we have now here, they are all champions. Amen. Everybody here is a champion and we are ready to grow and work together. But I also need to emphasize that one of our biggest advantages, or our biggest, um, uh, one of the game changers to our business is our uh, business model, connecting with the diaspora and working with them. We've got over 100 brokers across the globe, in, in the West, in North America, in Europe. We've got a lot of brokers. People in Canada are repping Royal Kingdom Estate. And we are able to share the proceeds. Everybody's in job because you can't come from America and understand the terrain. No. You bring your exposure, you bring your knowledge, connect it with the what? Local what? Local expertise. You match that together and become powerful. I think that's exactly the, the, the method that I use. Right. Because I partnered with somebody to do it. Okay. When I came, he was already on the ground, okay. knowing how the terrain is. Right. And then I, I, I went with that. So. Right. You are absolutely doing the right thing. You can't. It's a whole different world out here. Yeah. And you do have to understand. Yeah. I always tell my clients that, so I have lived in Ghana most of my life, but I always, I always have this joke that I, I tell I that. Was about to, I was about to get you on that one. Let's, let's do it. I always have this joke. I tell a lot of people when they come like, you don't sound Ghanaian. You behave like a diaspora. Well, I was, I have been in Ghana, but one leg has been in Ghana and one leg has and been out. Because from the age of 18, I've been working with expatriates from all over the world. How? 
Well, I used to be in the hospitality space. I've worked with Irish, I've worked with Americans, I've worked with British. So in all these journeys, even my dad used to own um, an art artisanary okay. uh, shop okay. at the art gallery. And foreigners love that. Yes, and when I was even in the GSS primary, I used to come for vacation. I used to, you know, and sell to these people. Oh. So I got exposed much earlier to these people. So my, my dad instilled in me the spirit of credibility being accountable for your action and knowing that you can't do anything and get away with it. You always be accountable. So all these things have shaped my life, working with all these multinational companies. I have brought all this knowledge together, put it together. And also, you know, with the backing of a good team, we have been able to create something. But this is just the beginning. I believe that we are going to go places with our clients mm -hmm. so, and then we will be able to elevate real estate in Ghana to the next level Absolutely. and with yourself. I mean, we are going to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Absolutely. I love it. So, um, it's quite amazing what you've done. Like you said, Thank you. I feel like you were part of us, right? Yeah. Like when I see you, I feel like you're a diaspora, like oh, you said, wow. so because yeah. I don't know, you, your soul yeah. left and went and come back. Uh, Some witchcraft that you did. <laughs> <laughs> but everything that you do, it's like yeah. you really understand that diasporans and what they want. And yeah. that's exactly what you're giving them. Right. So I just want to say thank you for what you're doing because just buying your new land just about maybe 15 years ago yeah. was not easy. Yeah. But now because of obviously YouTube, a couple of interviews that we're all doing, people that want to do something back home. A lot of diasporans give up on Ghana because they don't know where to start from buying land but now people like yourself and me we make it possible that you know, you know, you know genuinely I'm feeling emotional now because I've had clients who call me from the west and they are, they'll cry that Danny we wish we had met you earlier people have taken our money family and friends took our money to build for us somebody's own dad who used to live with him in the US came down to Ghana and swindled his own son. The guy is in Maryland. So it, stories like this makes me want to do more to help people. Obviously, when you help them, you get the returns. Of course. But the first priority is what? To help people, right? So we, Royal Kingdom Estates, we have spent most of the last few years acquiring so many land because we believe that land is the hottest commodity in real estate. And that is the number one biggest challenge for every but he wants to go into real estate or own a home. So we've done so much um, land acquisition in various parts of the country, both in prime, semi, and developing site. And we are ready to develop a lot of them in the coming years. Okay. So that is what we are doing. Awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome, yeah. awesome. Great stuff. So talking about family, you know, spending money, I've had, I know a lot of scary stories, but recently something that happened was the lady, just like you selling the new land, yeah. and the lady wanted, the son to come and make the payment. Right. So when the son came, I thought it was he was the one buying it. But when okay. the name the name that was given was yeah. the lady's name, I thought yeah. oh, this is sweet. You know, some especially Muslims do that. They will yeah. use their mom's name or whatever. Oh, okay. So he paid fifty percent, mm. and then the final fifty percent when the paperwork was, was ready, the guy was not. He was playing games. So oh, I said, wow. hey, I can refund you the money. The price already went up. I will sell it. So I'm, I'm I'm happy. It took about a month, and the mother finally called the office. She was the one buying it, but I trusted the son to give the money to the son to come and make the payment. And the guy chopped the second 50%. Wow. So even finding genuine land, just go and make the payment. With your own family members. Own son. Yeah. Just go make the payment and it didn't happen. Yeah. So imagine not seeing the land at all. Right. And just giving them the money. Right. So, so what you are doing is pretty big, man. Thank and, you so much. Yeah. I mean, the challenges are real. I mean, let's not pretend to the uh, viewers that the challenges are not real. But again, like I said, that is why God has raised people like yourself and myself to make the change. And we are big on the ground. We have mastered the art of acquiring litigation free land yourself. You have to do it the hard way. Uh, my story, I have crazy stories that you <laughs> but so what's, we, what's your crazy story? I Give have, us one. I have too many. I don't know which Give one I have to one. tell you. Give because, us one. Because no. I mean, people know my story. Give us one where you started now. Because before you got to where you are, being yeah. able to acquire a thousand acres, no issues at all, register it. As I see people working on your land, yeah. like nobody's coming there, yeah. everything is good to go. You must you must have some calluses and some stretch marks on your yeah. brain. I think you learn along the, the way mm -hmm. and the ability to be tenacious, to continue to push, to continue to push 
and not give up. I've got a lot of stories, man, but um, <laughs> I will share one. I mean, you learn, you learn, sorry, you learn along the way Absolutely. and the ability to be, not to be broken. I mean, you face so many adversities along the journey, but this industry in Ghana is, is meant for tough people. Absolutely. You have to have various layers of mental strength. So what, one of the, the toughest thing I face is dishonesty and greed. Somebody, a family who sold the land to me, every, every tool consists of various families. Yes. I bought the land from the family, but the stool registered it. We went and regularized with the stool. So I paid, for, I paid two different parties, right? Mm -hmm. So that should be fine, isn't it? Absolutely. Do you know what happened? The stool went and gave it to another person, sold it to another person, Hold on. started asking me for uh, a much more uh, a renewed terms which is much more expensive. Yeah, yeah, of course. And it means that I have to pay the third parties. When I couldn't pay the two, they sold the land to the other guy and they started playing buggy pocket with me. Somewhere along the journey, I just decided that, you know what? It's not worth fighting it. This industry, you must have high level discernment to pursue some and to let some go and then move ahead. So it's been a lot of stories, but again, we have grown to understand the market, understand how to deal with the people, our due diligence process is quite rigorous. If we are buying land, very expansive due diligence. We have team of lawyers, team of site managers, informants, a whole lot of teams that do underground work and we have been able to find our way. Uh, that's why now you, you see you that. You figure it out. Yeah, you yeah, figure yeah, it out. Yeah, so yeah. how many years, you've been in business, yeah. Royal Kingdom. Yeah. I saw your 10 year anniversary or something yeah, like that. Yeah. It's almost a decade since we've been in business. Almost a decade, so uh, yes. not a decade yet. No, it's exactly a decade, just, just like a decade. Okay. Yeah, that's like a decade, yeah. Okay. Because I started as a broker. Okay. I love, I love progressive growth. Don't jump, I want to tell young people. Thank you, I was about to, I was about <laughs> to get into that. So yeah. I, I, I saw one of your shows talking about, yeah. you know, you don't need money to start. Yes. Start by being a broker, work for someone. Yeah. Most most of the time, I think people down here, not just down here, a lot of people have grand ambitions. Exactly. They don't want to get their fingers nose dirty. Exactly. That's what I call it. Exactly. They just want to be the boss right away. No. But it doesn't work like that. No. You know, you just, you have to start from somewhere. Yeah. Everybody want to raise big capital to go do something. Yeah. But nobody's coming to save you. Right. You have to start with where you are, even if it's just working for someone, cleaning. I have friends that were just sweeping the floor. But they were hard workers right. and now where they are, you won't believe it. Exactly. So you have to start from somewhere. I so think what growing, you have for those I think growing organically is the best. If you skip the process, you'll come back to it. <laughs> I have been in real estate, I've been a broker. I sold as a broker, I sold for people. I progressively started getting into buying and selling myself. We call it uh, uh, land retailing. I started doing land retailing, then progressively I added construction. So Progressively, we added architecture. So it's a process. I have gone through all this process. And this process makes you become much more better as a brand. You have understanding of each. So I see a lot of diasporans who also come here and straight away they want to go into... Become a developer. Become right? a developer. You are not a developer in the US. How then do you come here or Europe? How then do you come all of a sudden? You are going to be stressed. You are going to be bent out. Take your time. Partner with a local uh, company work together progressively and then you can go and do your things. I think you're talking for me. That's exactly <laughs> what I did. Exactly. That's exactly what I did. Oh, now. Yeah, that's, that's why I, I see you're making a lot of money oh, now. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no I'm just, I'm, that, but that's exactly what I did. I'm just following your footsteps. Right. But that's exactly what I did. Right. My business partner already had a, a company on the ground. Okay. Building, building houses and all that stuff already. Okay. As you guys know, I'm an accountant. I'm not an architect. Accountant, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm, an, I'm an accountant. Play with the money, with the cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the most stingiest people I've ever met. Like the numbers. <laughs> you see me in front of the Excel. The, the only person who can take money from accountant are ladies. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> My business partner actually, you know, I know I work from home most of the time. Okay. And I went to the office one time, and I forgot what what it was. Oh, it was it was a piece of paper. So we used the paper. I wanted a piece of paper to write on it. Right. It was oh, give him the paper that we used to print the drawings which is a big one. I said, mm. no, 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 that's too big. And yeah. you know, I started doing the math and all that. Yeah. And he gave me a story of this guy was a twin. Okay. And uh, one was in UK or something. I forgot what it was. But he was like free giving. Mm. And the other one was an accountant, very stingy. <laughs> so something happened. I think the guy couldn't pregnant his wife or something like that. They swiped for him to come. It was a movie. Okay. And when the guy came and he came to the office, people started noticing like, 
this guy is very stingy because mm -hmm. uh, and he said i remind him of that <laughs> 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 so daddy it's been great talking to you right as you guys already heard he has a lot of locations um you know he has a channel royal kingdom estate it's on youtube if you haven't followed or subscribed already do so if you're looking for properties in ghana and you don't want to have any stretch marks on your brain you can you know talk to them you're not going to have any stress at all whatever you want them to do from purchasing registration all of that all in-house he will do that for you but i think you out. need to be celebrated much more because you were born in ghana right yes and then you moved to the state you could have just stayed there and enjoyed the largesse of life but you have come down here going through the bush trying to also create opportunity for others. And I know you're employing a lot of Ghanaians as well. You are helping the chiefs in the villages, doing a lot of charity works. So people like yourself, it's, you are a model to be studied. You get what I'm saying? Just okay. as we are here and trying to create opportunity, it's not easy for someone like you to just come in straight away and, and, and begin to settle in and do what you're doing. So I think people like yourself should be saying, and I, I, I think highly of you as well. I, I appreciate, I appreciate yeah. it, but you know, yeah. It wasn't easy. But <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't easy, but I think we found a way. It wasn't easy, but thank you very much. Right, right. Yeah, but right. we need we need more people down here to kind of people like yourself, thank people you. are already here thank to you. have the good mindset of people already there to come. Yeah. You have to be kind of selfless in a way. Because yes. like you said, I had a comfortable job at KPMG. Exactly. I could have just it was the path was laid out for me, but right. now I'm in the bush. Right. You know, I get stuck sometimes when it rains. And I have to go to two hours before I can leave. Right. And all that. But right. you know, right. that's 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 what's gonna make us. I, I wanna say something to our friends in the diaspora. Thank you. The future of Africa is now. You heard that? It's on the plates. We are sharing. I've got some. <laughs> He's got some. We want more. What are you waiting for? In Thank the midst you. of this challenge is when we are going to create great people. Do you want your name to be Eck in the history book of Ghana, Africa? The motherland is calling you now. Come, you heard, you heard let's Danny. work together. You heard Danny. So before we go, listen to what you said carefully. What I might have been preaching this all this while. And the land price that you're seeing right now, you think it's expensive, just wait for 10 years. I preach to people, land, we can't create any more of it. Ghana yes. is set. Yes. Ghana, the map is set. Right. Unless we go fight somebody, which we don't, we are not advocating for. Right. The land is set. So the least you can do is purchase one plot, one acre, whatever. Yeah. If you're not ready, just do that. Buy a piece of the motherland. I mean, a piece of the territorial boundary of Africa. You own a piece of it. Just, just buy that and the future will tell. Because I have a story. My father's friend told me to buy land when I was about uh, 19. I don't know what happened, but I got it. I never thought about moving to Ghana. It was never part of my plan. What I knew was people work today at 60... 65, 70, and then they come here, right. live like 10 years, and then they're gone. Right. That's, that, that was the model. So when you told me to buy it, for whatever reason, it just clicked. And I bought it when I was 21. I had no idea that I would ever one day think that I want to come to Ghana. So when this idea of me coming to Ghana came in, I didn't have to go look for land. I already had the land. Right. I bought a land about three years ago. People are now already living there. And I was able to pick it up from there. So that's why I'm telling people that the least you could do is to buy the land. You have no idea you want to move that, you want to build a house, just buy it, register it. I'll, I'll tell you a trade show. secret. I, I have to share this. Okay. So, Royal Kingdom Estate has never gone to the bank for facilities to undertake all this project. What do we do? We do land banking. Lands that we've purchased four years ago have appreciated so much. We just go in there, sell a few, do a development, solve some problems. So equally, if they, anybody wants to purchase land, land banking and all that, you and I, we are here. They should talk to us. We exactly. show them the way. You heard that land banking, because as we all know, we are on a fiat currency. For those of you guys who don't know, fiat currency is, the money we all spend is not backed by gold. It's not backed by anything. They just print it out of thin air. So if you have land, as inflation and all that stuff is happening. Land like is the just, it's an asset that does not depreciate. You it's can, always appreciated. Land gold. Yes. Right? Yes. So a piece of land, you need that. Having dollars in the bank and all that stuff is good for emergency. Inflation. But it's really not inflation will slash it for you. <laughs> it's really not going to build wealth. Yeah. But land, as Danny Pritch, I see myself. I'm buying more land that I buy clothes now. Okay? So that is... That is the same size of land that was there before creation. Is the same size that is there today. Exactly. So one day we'll just wake up and all the lands are gone. Gone. 
you buy 50%, I'll buy all, and then we finish everything. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. So, you know how we do it. If you've not subscribed to the channel already, kindly do so. And Royal Kingdom, you know, check them out. They got a lot of amazing stuff on their channel. All right, until next time, guys. Be legendary. Peace.